This episode may contain content of a graphic nature, including descriptions of physical and sexual violence against adults, children, and animals. Listener discretion is advised. Hi everyone, I'm Talia. And I'm Tanya. And together we are Crimes and Consequences, a true crime podcast. Welcome, everybody, to this episode of Crimes and Consequences. I am Talia. This is my lovely co-host, Tanya. We are two lawyers who love true crime. And we want to thank True Crime Daily for allowing us to be on their channel for this. And the story that I have today, I'm warning everybody, it's oh. it's bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. I mean, they're all bad. Yeah, this they're is, all bad. This is different. It's pretty than, gruesome. Than what we're used to. Um, we'd like to ask everybody to hit the subscribe, follow, like, love button. Yes. Anything. Is there a love button? I don't know. Mm. There should be. There should be. Tell your friends and family. And thank you guys all for supporting us. And with that. I guess it's time to dive in. Okay, so this story was written by someone I really respect, and her name is Rachel Stiller, and she did an amazing job on this story. I did research and follow up on it, and she is amazing. And with that, we're gonna we're gonna start. Okay, being a parent is obviously a rewarding job. And being a parent of an only child can often create a very special bond because you have just one child. I just have one child. That's right. Yeah. And she's like your BFF, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, their child was doted on, spoiled by the parents and the grandparents. Mm-hmm. And she usually got everything that she needed. She was the only child of Clay and Sheila Fletcher, and her name was Lacey. And this is the story of Lacey Fletcher. She had a very comfortable lifestyle. They lived in a town called Slaughter, Louisiana. Oh. I would say it sounds lovely, but it doesn't. But Slaughter, it probably is a lovely place. I'm, maybe. Maybe. But why did it, I don't know how, like, hey, let's name this town Slaughter. I know. Okay. I'm always confused when they have weird names, but. Well, the question becomes, what happens when parents go from spoiling a child rotten to letting the child rot? Oh, come on, Talia. Really? Uh, This is bad. Mm. This is bad. Her once caring parents ended up neglecting her. But let's get into Lacey's life. Lacey Ellen Fletcher was born on Monday. It was the Monday before Thanksgiving in November. It was the 25th, 1985. To the proud parents of Clay and Sheila Fletcher. The new family of three, they resided in this small bedroom community of Slaughter, which I told you guys all about, Slaughter. And that is located in the East Valencia, Valencia Parish of Louisiana. Slaughter is a suburb of, it's a suburb of Baton Rouge. Okay. I mean, and that's the state capital. When Lacey was roughly nine years old, her family moved across town into a two-story ranch-style home, and it's on a gravel cul-de-sac in a very affluent area. It was a nice area to live in, and Lacey was ecstatic. The neighbors there had children her age. Oh, nice. She had people to play with. She's in a nice area. Things are going good. And then, you know, she had her classmates. She had a new school. Her classmates described her as being 
a nice, caring person who always made a point to be friendly with the new students. Oh. She was one of those people. Oh. Always nice to the new kid. Oh, I love kids like that. Right? And she went to a place called Brownfield Baptist Academy. The Fletcher family also regularly attended a Baptist church, and that was in a nearby town called Zachary, where um, Lacey was part of the youth group. So, you know, she's nine, she's 10, she's got friends, she's living in a good area, she's in a youth group. She was on the volleyball team in 1997, 1998, and, I mean, that was one of her favorite hobbies. She loved volleyball. But Lacey had anxiety, and she had later been diagnosed with autism. As she got older, her friends made note of several differences in her personality, like compared to other kids that age. One classmate described Lacey, and this is a quote, not your typical teenager because she liked children's things not teenage things. The other children noticed that Lacey did not seem as mature as they were. So developmentally, she was becoming behind as far as emotionally. Okay. And there were subtle changes in her personality too. Lacey seemed to become more withdrawn. And when she was about 14, it, this is about nine grade friends realized that Lacey saw she got diagnosed with autism mm. so she's she's 14 and severe social anxiety no. those that have never had a social anxiety disorder or or a social phobia it's this intense fear of situations that are unfamiliar mm -hmm. to you and you feel like you're going to be watched or judged and so your heart races and you become really, really anxious. These situations, like all of us get a little bit of social anxiety, right? right. But we still go in, mm -hmm. we still meet with people. But hers became extreme. Mm. It, it got to the point where she would avoid any social situation. And she would go to like make up every excuse oh. possible. To which avoid we, it. Which we have done before yeah. <laughs> to avoid yes. not going to them. And it only worsened when um, they diagnosed her with autism. I mean, simply put, autism, as most probably know, is a neurological and developmental disorder that affects how people interact with others, how they communicate learn mm -hmm. and behave and it seemed as though as Lacey got older these conditions became more extreme for her yeah, it doesn't necessarily affect your intelligence no 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 it's, it's just how you process the world around you right yeah and yeah exactly she met with a psychologist for about three years to help treat her and she only seemed to get worse at this point, her parents, Clay and Sheila, made the decision to homeschool her because I think school in and of itself oh. became too anxious. Oh, yeah, probably. Like, she's just, her anxieties were well, yeah, just Yeah, so she's in high school having to mm -hmm. change classes, so it's unfamiliar people in every class. Well, not necessarily all of them are unfamiliar, it's but... Just too much for, it's yeah. just too much for her. So she becomes somewhat of a reclusive person friends and neighbors began seeing less and less of Lacey outside of mm -hmm. the Fletcher home after she began after she was homeschooled like they basically never saw didn't her, see her because now she has no excuse to leave the house right right she right. doesn't have volleyball anymore she doesn't have all of this Clay and Sheila explained to people that were really concerned about Lacey, that her, she had extreme social anxiety and that her auto, autism had progressed. And they that seemed to pacify 
their friends' worries as to why they weren't seeing mm. Lacey anymore. Clay and Sheila continued about their normal lives. Um, the Fletcher couple, we'll call them, were thought to be church-going pillars of the community. Okay? Okay. Because nobody's seeing Lacey. Clay actually held the office of the president of the Baton Rouge Civil War Roundtable. Oh, wow. Something you've been trying to achieve for years. Yes. <laughs> Wow. It is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to educate and foster an appreciation for the sacrifices made during the Civil War. So, that the was Civil War real. is actually really interesting. Oh, I mean, I I'm love a history it. nerd. I am. I mean, I, I am totally into. Yeah. It's a really interesting time war in our country. Like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. American Civil War. Yeah. yeah. Sheila served for four years as an elder person. Okay. In the town of Slaughter before resigning in February of 2022. Maybe it's like their former city council. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I I'm just pulling shit out of my ass. Elders. I don't know. I should have looked it up, too, <laughs> before I said anything. <laughs> she also served as Slaughter's mayor pro term mm. in conjunction with working as an assistant to the Slaughter city prosecutor. Okay. So she's way involved. Way involved. In city politics. Yeah, don't know how I can be an assistant to the prosecutor. prosecutor. Without being an attorney? Right. I don't know what the rules are in Louisiana. I don't know what they do in Louisiana, but they, have, they do have different. They don't, that wouldn't work here. Yeah, no. She also worked as needed as a police and court clerk oh. in the nearby town of Baker, Louisiana. Wow, so she's she got her finger in the pie everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Man. They were very consistent in being part of the community and were deeply respected by everyone. It was only a few close friends and long time, long time neighbors that noticed the couple never spoke anymore about their once vibrant daughter, Lacey. Mm. It'd been years. Red flag. Years. 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 When asked about Lacey's well-being, the parents would reply that she's doing fine and she still lives at home with them. But, you know, she's got that social anxiety Mm -hmm. and autism, which which I believe she, I mean, she had. After hearing that Lacey was still living under the Fletcher's roof, neighbors realized it's been 15 years since we've seen Lacey. 15 years? 15 fucking years. Wow. Wow. Oh, time goes by fast. Yeah, like, like, oh, it's a blink of an eye. 15 years. Mm, that's suspicious. Where was Lacey the whole time? You know, and they're like, okay, I get she's got problems. But doesn't but she go to the dentist? Doesn't she go to the doctor? We haven't seen her in 15 yes. fucking I mean, she, years. She's not going to be in the house every single day of her life for 15 years. You have to go out at some point to get treatments. What, you know. So people started asking questions, and then her parents eventually said that she kind of moved out of town. Oh, she just up and moved? Moved out of town, and that was the reason for her absence. I mean, 15 years. She went to live on her own. Someone has severe social anxiety. Okay. Unfortunately, um, Lacey's true location would soon no longer be a mystery. Oh, no. The community, the state, nation, and the world would be aware of where 36-year-old Lacey Ellen Fletcher was. And it is not a good, it is not good. This is bad, guys. Mm -hmm. Warning you, this is bad. On Monday, January the 3rd of 2022. So this is recent. This is recent. At approximately 2.30 a.m., the Slaughter Police Department received a call about an unresponsive person in the home on Tom Drive, which is where Clay and Sheila lived. Sheila had called 911 and stated that she'd found her daughter unresponsive on the family's couch. 
Sheila and her husband, Clay, had just returned home from a weekend getaway. They were on a vacation that night before she made the call. Sheila told the dispatcher that the last time she saw her daughter was around 10 p.m. when they got home from their little trip. And the previous night, she was alive and she was well, but now she's unresponsive. A neighbor had visited the Fletcher home and urged Sheila to call 911. That's the reason why Sheila called 911, as a neighbor came over and said, you got to call 911. Because the reason is, this neighbor saw Lacey. Mm. And I'm just going to describe what she saw. She was on the family's 1960s-style leather couch. This gets me very upset because this is a very upsetting story. At first, responders arrived to the scene, and the Fletcher's home was neat. It was tidy. It was, it, they found Clay and Sheila sitting on the ki- at the kitchen table, just, you know, waiting for them with their dead daughter on the couch. The cough, couple offered... No explanation for the horrific smell in the family home. Okay. And what they had just discovered before. This is so bad, Tanya. Mm. So bad, you guys. Emergency personnel quickly noticed that there was one area of the Fletcher home that was not as tidy as the rest of the house. And that was where the stench was coming from the partially nude and deceased body of Lacey was sitting upright in a shoulder deep, deep in a hole on the couch. A hole was in the couch. Mm -hmm. Okay. The East Valenciana Parish coroner's office was contacted, and immediately once authorities began to investigate, they realized, wait, this situation, it's really serious. Investigators discovered that Lacey was severely uh, emaciated. She Uh weighed 96 pounds and was, I can't, I'm having a hard time. You guys got to cope with me. She was covered with rodent feces and multiple live insects, including maggots. Oh. Okay. This is going to get really bad. Feces was seen smeared on her face, her chest, her abdomen, and there were numerous insect bites found all over her body. East Valenciana Corner, Dr. Bickman is his name, Bickham, reported that Lacey's body was nestled in a hole on that couch, okay, because it had been worn away through the upholstery and the foam of the couch cushions by Lacey's own waist (gasps) and her body fluids. Oh, no. Oh, are you serious? Oh. The scene had been described as if Lacey had melted <gasps> or was fused to the couch. Okay, hold on a second. Let me oh sip my water. Okay. Here. Uh, so how long mm-hmm. was she actually mm-hmm. in that spot? Oh my god! And not to be fused and yes. melt. And melted into to erode the sofa, and her parents just went on vacation. Yeah, they just uh, okay. The floor beneath the cl- the couch where Lacey had laid, had begun to buckle <sighs> due to the collection mm-hmm. of urine and feces. Mm. The fuck, dude. Okay, Doctor Bickham explained that the smell of the scene was so horrendous. He had to excuse himself to the front yard to vomit. Okay, now you know that's bad. He's a medical examiner. Yeah, you know that's bad. That's bad. When he has to vomit. 
I mean, you know he's seen some shit, too. He's seen sh- oh. lots of shit. Oh, no. This is bad. So sad. Very sad. Um, the parish district attorney, his name was Sam D'Aquila. D'Aquila? I don't know. He described the scene by stating it smelled of rot. We don't even treat animals like this. It has been suspected that Lacey remained on the couch and in the same position for the last 12 years. 12 years? Yes. She was never moved to eat, exercise, or go to the bathroom. That is cruel. It's me to say. 12 years. Years did they like chain her to the couch? I'll, I'll get to all that. Okay. <laughs> Doctor Bickham recorded Lacey's official time of death at three o seven a.m. on Monday, January third of twenty twenty two. Do you know how much suffering? Oh, she had to have gone through. Yeah, absolutely. He believed that Lacey had been dead for at least twenty four hours, if not forty eight oh. hours. Before the authorities were even notified. Yeah. During her autopsy. um, Sorry. During Lacey's autopsy, material from the couch and human waste were found inside her stomach. (sighs) Dr. Bickham concluded that Lacey had been consuming pieces of the foam from the couch and her own feces in an effort to... to feed herself. <sighs> Multiple severe ulcers were found on the underside of her body, as you can imagine. Yeah, bed sores, right? Right, mm-hmm. including her feet, Aww. her buttocks, and some wounds were so severe that they had rotten to the bone. <gasps> oh, my God. <sighs> she was in severe pain. Severe for this stage, four pressure ulcers had to be present, and they would have been um, constant pressure in the area for years mm-hmm. to get to the point where you have bone. Oh, my goodness. Lacey's hair was matted, knotted, and infested with maggots. Mm. Although it's unclear how she was exposed, Lacey was also tested positive for COVID-19. I don't know. It's time of her death. Wow. She must have got it from her parents. Obviously, yeah. Investing her parents. Dr. Bickham stated that Lacey's death was the result of numerous years of medical neglect and ruled the manner of death homicide. Mm. In 30 years of being a doctor, he stated that the scene was the worst he'd ever been to, adding, and this is a quote. I could not eat for a week. Oh. I cried for a week. Okay, it's bad. It's a medical examiner. I know, the medical examiner. They've seen everything. Wow. Right? They've seen everything. They've seen everything. Her official cause of death was death stemmed from severe medical neglect, which led to chronic malnutrition, oh. acute starvation, immobility, acute ulcer formation, and osteomyelitis, which is a bone infection that leads to septic or sepsis. Oh, God. Lacey had not had medical attention since 2010, which would have been 12 years before her death. And Clay and Sheila, they were her sole caregivers, right? They never sought help for her. They never took her any place. They never did anything. For Lacey, Sheila claimed that she would frequently clean Lacey's various wounds and that Lacey never once complained about anything. I find that really hard to believe. Really hard to believe. Her parents claimed that Lacey refused to leave her seat on the couch. I also find that really hard to believe. Even to use you're the not, bathroom. Yeah, I was just going to say, you're not going to get up and use the bathroom. No, because you know what? You're the parent and you're going to make her get up. And you're going to make her go to the bathroom. She's an adult. And if you can't do it, you call professionals that will help you. That's bullshit. I call bullshit on them. Call bullshit. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. It's basic human. They said they would bring Lacey meals on the couch and sometimes p- provide her with a bedside toilet for her use. She said They said that she refused to use that toilet. I mean, if it was 12 years, she had to be like 24 when this started. And okay. You're 24 year old. Okay. And I understand she has autism. Okay. Okay. But she went to school. She was a functioning She's in the normal. volleyball team. Yeah. She was a normal person. And there, no, no. She did not require Get help. that type of care. Get help for your kid then. Yeah. I it mean, was that bad. They, she could physically do everything. And I really find this, this, yeah. This case. I find this, they're, I guess that's what they have to say because the truth is disgusting. They considered moving her to a mental or medical facility. No, instead let her rat away on the couch. But they said she, she, she wouldn't cooperate. Uh Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Well, and I guess we're just going to let let you rot on our couch. Yes. Okay. And did they never have friends over? We tried. They never have anybody over at their house? Like, Apparently not. Right? And where? what about grandma and grandpa and aunts and I uncles? Know, just, Where's, this whole story is just fucking with me. Anyway. So no action was taken because the parents <sighs> said she refused to cooperate. So there you go. I mean. Can't get her to do it. In the state of Louisiana, if a patient like Lacey refuses treatment, the person's legal representative can request that she be forced to. Just like here. Yeah, exactly. Hello, it's called involuntarily committed. Mm-hmm. So despite their saying, oh, Lacey, Lacey wouldn't cooperate, they could have saved her. They could have. They could have done something. Can they, you- But they were adamant. You ready for this? Okay. They were adamant that she was of sound in mind to make her own type of decisions. And that, and that they were okay with those decisions, assuming mm. she made them. She was fine. Yeah, she was fine. She just didn't feel like getting up off the couch for 12 fucking years. Yeah. I'm, wow. They said she suffered from a condition called lock-in syndrome. Okay. Um, which is a rare disorder of the nervous system. But if that's true, get her fucking help. Yeah, get her some medical help Give her then. some fucking help. People with locked in syndrome are usually paralyzed except for muscles that control eye movement. Okay. Okay. These individuals are conscious, they're aware, and they have the ability to think and to reason. And obviously, so talk. Saying, yeah. So they're saying she was paralyzed. So right. she couldn't walk. Mm-hmm. She couldn't probably feed herself. Were they feeding her? Apparently not that much. Mm-mm. So she's paralyzed. Okay, you have a family Wait, but member. How is she moving enough to eat her the couch? Yeah, like, oh, you're right. That's right. And her own feces. Yeah. She's able to move. Let's not forget that. Yeah, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. I mean, but you have a family member that this happens to. You're just going to let them sit on the couch and... Not get them hey, any type of help. It's Lacey's choice. Yeah, she she's being really she's an difficult. Adult. And how is she being Fuck so them. difficult? They can't carry her out of the house if she's paralyzed. And how are they tending to her wounds when they go to her bone? Yeah, right. I'm. Mm. Told you the story is gonna make you really mad. Okay, let's move on. Okay. So traditionally, they're unable to move or speak, but are still able to communicate through blinking movements. Have you ever read um, the book, uh, was it The Bullet and the Butterfly, or is that that song by? Oh, by Smashing Pumpkins, <laughs> um, with Butterfly but, Wings or something? Yeah, a Bullet with butter. The, the book with yeah, the no, guy, no. I have it. I'm sorry, no. I read it. He is locked in syndrome. He used to work for a magazine, uh, and he describes what it is. He couldn't do anything but blink, and he wrote a book. Okay. Oh, in real life, the author. Yeah. Okay. He wrote a book. Wow. It's um, it's gonna kill wow. me till I think. It'll of come it. to you. Something with wings, butterfly wings. But that's locked in syndrome. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's locked in. But he wrote a book. But he had to have it through blinking. There was a computer, and someone would do like point to A, mm-hmm. B, and then you blink. Oh wow. 
Yeah, so he didn't write a book. Yeah. Normal way. He couldn't move. That's right. locked in syndrome. Okay. Where was I at? Because I'm getting all fired up. I know, right? I'm all <laughs> fired up right now. Um, the medical examiner said Lacey didn't have the syndrome. And he only listed um, what he knew, which was from the medical records, autism and social anxiety. Okay. While under investigation, Clay and Sheila Fletcher were not immediately charged with Sheila's death. Lacey's death. Sorry, that's Lacey's okay. death. Sorry, I'm getting all, I told you, I'm getting all worked up here. Mm-hmm. I need to take a second to breathe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sheila, soon after uh, Lacey's death, Sheila posted on Facebook a post that read, quote, Mom and Dad love you so much, end quote. This message stunned a lot of family and friends because they were in, like, what the fuck kind of shit happened. Clay's supervisor, his name was John Potts, had known Clay for six years. Uh, His name was John uh, Potts. Told investigators, the details are horrific. There is no doubt about that. And I cannot conceive how something like that could even happen with somebody I knew. Yeah, even somebody I don't know uh, joined the club. I can't conceive that this happens. Clay had only mentioned briefly in passing in January of that year that he had a daughter to John. And he told, his, he told John, his supervisor, that his daughter lived out of town. So there you go. Yep. Knowing you've done something wrong because you're telling people your daughter lives out of town. Mm-hmm. Some neighbors of the Fletchers didn't even know that Clay and Sheila had a daughter. I mean, how would they? Yeah. It was only the long, like, longtime neighbors that knew. Clay and Sheila, Sheila's family would have noticed Lacey's absence in family outings, right? Yeah, you think. Mm-hmm. Clay had two sisters, two brothers, a brother-in-law, a sister-in-law. She led two sisters. They had a whole family, blah, blah, blah. This family would, in, would consist of all the cousins and of Lacey, and everybody would bring their kids. It's unclear when the family was questioned what they really knew, except that um, Lacey was being well cared for and was very reclusive. So she didn't want to come. Yeah. She didn't want to come. They trusted that Clay and Sheila were, you know. Well, yeah, because you don't think think. your fucking family members are letting their child rot away on a couch. couch. I mean, it's disgusting. You don't want to. Okay, I'm all fired up too. Sorry. You can continue. And obviously they had not been invited over to the Fletcher's house in many, many years. Both Clay and Sheila were forced to leave their jobs. Probably. Probably because all their coworkers thought they were fucking disgusting yeah. animals. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Clay resigned from his, his position as president of the Civil War Roundtable in Baton Rouge. And his supervisor, John, stated that he was unsure at the time if Clay would ever be welcomed back. Well, I'm going to say no. Yeah. I'm going to say no. Sheila was put on administrative leave and no longer worked. Um, for the city prosecutor in Zachary. <sighs> so they're waiting for more facts to come out. Like, I, I, what the? What f- more facts do they need? Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to tell you what okay. I mean. I'm going to tell you. Okay. In April of 2022, just four months after Lacey's death, the Fletchers still had not formally been charged with neglect. Not even neglect. Not even neglect, which is like, the lowest on the total. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The district attorney, Sam DeQuo, DeQuo, I don't know, intended to bring second degree murder charges against them. What the fuck is he waiting for? Right? Since you are on fire. She doesn't normally talk like this. What the fuck is he waiting for? <laughs> yeah, what is for? he waiting for? Do your goddamn job. But he acknowledged this is extremely complicated. Uh-huh. He said the second-degree murder is uh, a charge is proper 
because he believes the parents of Lacey and Fletcher intended to kill her, in essence. You can't leave someone rotting to the bone with maggots in their hair, starving to death, go on vacation, and expect them to be fine. I mean, why didn't they just kill her? Honestly. I mean, they just smother her or something. Why did they let... Uh... <laughs> He Not believes, that I'm condoning smothering your child, but geez, she suffered. He believes that they went on that trip. Because they knew? Because they knew she was dying. Yeah. And they didn't want to be there. Let her die alone, too, on yeah, top of it. you know what? This is so fucking sad. Right. I'm just... People are never... I mean, they constantly amaze me at the... I just, it's just so, I can't, I can't, no, I can't. I'm sorry. Can't. Okay. I'm sorry. Continue, please. Um, Clay and Sheila weren't considered a flight risk. And that's, I think that's part of the reason they weren't quickly charged because he didn't believe they're going yeah. anywhere. He said, the question on everybody's mind is, quote, how could they be caretakers living in the same house mm-hmm. with her? And have her get into a condition like that. Mm -hmm. This is cruelty to the infirm. We can't just let it sit and do nothing. So they were arrested. Finally. Yeah. Uh, It got deferred. I'm not going to go into all that. Uh, Grand jury determined charges were warranted against parents. Um, There's, it's a lot. It's a lot more complex because they did just let her rot, but she's also an adult. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the district attorney told news outlets, on a murder, you have to have intent. Did they want to kill her? I want to say, yeah. They wanted to kill her. Which is pretty... I mean, it's different than neglect. The they yeah, They definitely. wanted her to die. They sure took the worst possible way. So the grand jury. This is like shit you see in a movie. Grand jury. um, I told you second degree murder charges against Clay and Sheila. And um, uh, it took five months Hmm. for them to be arrested on these charges. (laughs) And the mandatory sentence is life in prison with no possibility of parole. Huh, for second degree? Mm-hmm. Wow. Right? That's pretty. So the grand jury saw photos. Oh, man. I forgot about having to look at photos. Of oh. the condition of Lacey and how she'd been found. And the members of the grand jury were so horrified by these images. Medics had to be brought in on standby. Because of the shock of the photos. Wow. Oh, man. I mean, the medical examiner did say it's the worst he's ever seen in his life. And he life. had to go out and puke. And he, yeah, and he, he had, had to, to go, go out. puke. So I can, uh, I can only imagine. So they were indicted, like I said, second degree murder for the death of their daughter. Their bond was set at 300000 each, which I feel is kind of low. But, yes, but okay. Sheila was released on bond at 1030 that day, Clay was forced to stay the night in jail, but he was released by 10 a.m. Someone posted bond for them. Oh, they used a bondsman and their mm. assets, and they had money. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Um, court case got delayed for a while, and Lacey's parents still maintained that they were absolutely not guilty. Um, there was an attorney to represent both of them, which the same attorney represented yes, both know, of them. Yeah. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to relieve uh, to relive the pain of losing the child through the media. They've been through a lot of heartache over the years. Anyone who lost a child knows what it feels like. And he was saying that, um, that was, I don't know. That's just a quote. I don't know why he said it. 
There were multiple indictments. They've but been through enough. They've been through so they've much. They've been through so, so fucking much. Because their ass wasn't rotting on a couch. <sighs> rotting on a couch. I'm so disgusted with these people. So their attorney filed a motion on 2023 to dismiss the charges filed against them. Um, I'm not going to go through all that. If They're, you tell me they don't go to jail, I'm going to fucking go off. <laughs> Um, prosecutors had inadvertently used the language in the indictment referencing cruelty to the elderly and not to the infirm. Oh, no. Which caused the charges to be thrown out. Why did I, why did I know? Uh, okay. Why did I know that you were going to say some shit like that? Okay. Go, go on. You better... Somebody better have fixed that goddamn motion. Yeah, there was a second indictment. Okay. They were re-indicted. Um, that was on Monday, June uh, 19th of 2023. They turned themselves into the police. They were granted bonds. Um, the district attorney said, we will ensure that there's justice for Lacey. And I will proofread everything that gets filed from now on. <laughs> right. And I will be doing Ooh, it somebody, personally. Somebody lost their job over that one. And the public knows that caregivers will be charged for neglecting or abusing a person in their care. I have not, I have not much, but I have a little compassion for them. But I think we have to send a message. We need to take care of your people better than you do your animals. Oh, you need to take care of your people better than you do your animals. I just want people to recognize if you have a situation like that to take action. Lacey's death was a crime against humanity. Yeah. I hope the indictment brings some spotlight to the victims of this type of crime. Um, there's second degree murder trial. But it doesn't start till this year. Oh, they're still in jail. No, they're out on bond, right? They're out on bond. What the hell? So you have two parents. I mean, I, I I'm speechless. I don't. I just. I'm sure they had a hard time. Yeah. Okay. But. but, but no. No. But no. 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 There are parents. No. There are parents that have disabled children who grow into disabled adults that they have to take care of or that they seek help, like, for care for their children. I mean, she, as far as I know, she did not have any physical disabilities, you know. I mean, if, if you guys, this is a if bullshit, you got, it's if a you bullshit defense. If you have a kid with locked-in yes. syndrome, you don't, people with locked-in syndrome don't just sit on a fucking couch. You have to be in a hospital, like, you had to get like breathing tubes yeah. and stuff. I mean, and she's not being cared for like for, okay, let's say she does Bather. get locked in syndrome and she won't get up off the couch. You're just letting her like rot. Yeah, rot. To the point your floor, their floor. Like not give, not even caring for her that way. I mean, they make adult sized you know, diapers, diapers and things and... that people can use. I mean, they're not, they're not even giving her the basic care there. Plus she's malnutritioned. Maggots she's on her. They yeah. couldn't take the maggots She's starving her? to death. I mean, this is just fucking disgusting. I just couldn't even take the maggots off. Her. <sighs> no. Even though she so, can't move to and fight her you. matted. So she's not even getting her hair brushed. Just how do these people live with themselves? This is your child. This this is worse than I think almost any serial killer story that we've done. It's so bad. and, and there's, it's there's some sick, years of rotting. There's some sick bastards out there yeah, that have bastards. tortured and done horrible things to people. I think this has to rank right up there because <laughs> this is just so sad. I just I I'm I uh, I feel like I'm gonna cry when I leave here today. You and I are gonna talk. because this is just We're sad. Talk. It's just. Sad and disgusting, and these people. There's you, no excuse. No, there really is no excuse. I mean, it helped. This is modern 2022. Okay, let's say it's happened in 2010. This is modern times, people. Get your child some help. 
They didn't want to spend the money. I mean, what is really their excuse? What is the they true excuse? They wouldn't have excuse? to because she's an adult. She could get Medicaid or, yeah. me- you know, yeah, and the state would could. pay for her. I mean, what is your true excuse? Don't give a fuck? I Don't mean, give a fuck. You want to stay in that couch? You want you want somebody to rot in your living room? And how did she How did she say she wanted to stay in the couch? Blinking? I, I just, I can't. I'm so mad. I'm so I can't. angry. I can't talk about it anymore. Yeah. I'll shut up now. I could rant on for another I hour. Know, we will. But I'm not going to bore you with my rants because you're probably pissed as well if you've gotten this far into the story. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Well, anyway, let's just, let's take a second and just honor her. Yes. She's in a better place. Oh, well. No. Had to be in a better. Has yeah. to be in a better has place, be right? Better. This poor that poor woman suffered horribly, and I'm glad her suffering is over. That's yeah. the only thing I can say. And I want to thank um, Rachel Stiller for writing. Yeah, thanks, this, Rachel. Because she did a lot of research, and it is hard to research this stuff and then write it. Yeah. You get emotionally. Yeah, there's been times we've had to put, I've had to put stories aside. Yeah. You've had to put stories aside. I can't, for years. Yeah, for years. I mean, there are literally there's stories that we've done it's that I can't. Too painful. That I would have to wait and just process before i could come back and write the story so i understand that yeah this is bad. so a big shout out to rachel for helping us yes with this um i want to thank you guys all for taking the time to watch us on true crime daily and hit the subscribe slash follow slash love slash enamored you slash you're the hottest (laughs) women out there slash button um and also for those listening to us on your favorite app, whether it be Spotify, Apple, Spreaker, yeah, Apple, whatever, whatever one, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. There's a billion Pandora, of them. Pandora, Amazon, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. Um, also, we have crimesandconsequences.com. You can go there. You can get merchandise that we have uh, for sale there. Some t-shirts, lots of things we have there. And we have a Patreon account. It's patreon.com and it's T and the letter N and then T. Because that's how we started Because we're dynamite. T and T. No. Tanya and Talia. Tanya and Talia. <laughs> Not we're so dynamite. So it's patreon.com slash T and T crimes. And we have weekly audio episodes that are ad free. And we also release the videos on audio, audio yeah. ad-free um, early. early. So you have early releases. And you can do the same with Apple Podcast, but Apple yep. wouldn't let us today. Yeah, Apple's giving us a problem. Yeah, Apple's but... giving us some problems. But same idea. But it'll get there eventually. Yeah. So I want to thank uh, True Crime Daily for letting us be with them. I want to thank all of you guys for taking the time to go through this story with us. We appreciate and love you all, except for the ones that write bad comments. You guys can (laughs) fuck off. Yeah, fuck off is a good word. And I'm going to say I'm going to follow this. I'm going to have to go home and figure out when their trial is. I mean, it's coming up. Yeah, coming up. um, Like June, I think. No, not soon enough. These fuckers are out just living their lives. God bless it. Anyway. Okay. Well. Anything else? No, I think you covered everything. So until our next episode. Don't kill each other. Bye. Bye.